Once upon a time, there was a small boy who loved the ocean very much. One day he went out to his favorite beach and he saw that there were thousands of starfish that had washed ashore in a storm. Well, he was only a small boy and there were many, many starfish, but he knew he had to help. So one by one, he carried them out into deeper water so that they could survive. A man came up and laughed at the kid and the task before him. He said, kid, you don't know what you're doing. There's so many starfish. What are you doing won't matter. And as the boy carried another starfish out to deeper water, he said, it matters to this one. Hi, I'm Ed Begley Jr. And did you know that three quarters of the Earth's surface is water? And in that water home, millions of plants and animals live. We're going to go out and visit them today in their very special home. The home that we see before us is a place called the Coral Reef outside a Central American country called Belize. Now, how are we going to get there? Well, we can't walk, we can't ride our bicycles. We're going to have to snorkel. So please welcome our snorkeling guide, Kate. Open your coloring books to page nine, and you'll see a picture of the first important piece of equipment, the mask. Fish and dolphins have special eyes for seeing underwater, but not people. Our eyes are made to see through the air. So when we go snorkeling, we bring our air with us. The mask traps air in front of our eyes. With the mask on, we can see underwater. Turn to page 11 in your book to look at the next piece of equipment. The one that will let you breathe easily while you float on the surface, the snorkel. With a snorkel, you can keep your face in the water with your head down and keep breathing. With a mask and snorkel, you can stay floating face down a long time and see all the beautiful and interesting things underwater. Turn to page 12 of your coloring book and you'll see the next piece of equipment, the fins. Ducks never get tired when they swim, but people do. That's why we wear fins when we snorkel, because they are shaped like a duck's feet. And when they're strapped onto your feet, you'll swim tirelessly and quickly through the water, just like a duck. Turn to page 13 in your book, and you'll see the last piece of equipment used in snorkeling, the snorkeling vest. A snorkeling vest is inflatable. You can blow air into it and just float on the surface of the water if you get too tired to swim. Now that we've learned about our equipment, let's get wet. Hi, Kate. Ready to come aboard? These are my children, Amanda and Nick. Go ahead. Hope we're in time for the keel hauling. <laughs>
one of the main things that you should remember when we get in the water, the water here is about six feet deep, so you really can't touch the bottom. Now when you're snorkeling on in the reef crest, where the water can be very shallow, you have to remember that if you, there's really no reason you need to stand up. Because the thing that happens with, with people snorkeling, the way that you might damage this reef area, is if you try to stand up. Now many people on the shore and on boats like this accumulate garbage of plastic variety and other garbage. Isn't it a good idea to be very careful about how you stow this stuff on board of a boat or at the shore so it doesn't go into the marine environment? Exactly. There's a little phrase that says, um, stow it, don't throw it. Our seas are becoming full of pollution, not just from people like us that go out to the reef, but big boats way offshore. And you can walk along, Belize has miles and miles of uninhabited beaches, and even when there are no people around on the beach, you'll find garbage there. Plastics and all kinds of strange things that have washed out from the deep sea from pollution. So what we can all do is, if you go on a beach picnic or if you're walking on the beach, just pick up whatever you can. Now that you've seen how fun snorkeling can be, let's take a look at some of the basic skills we'll need to learn to snorkel safely. Keep your books nearby, and remember, to be a good safe snorkeler, you need more than just to watch this film. You and your family should take lessons from a qualified Naui underwater instructor. We're here poolside in San Diego with young snorkelers Anthony Casaliccio and Raquel Rivera. Raquel will now show you how to do the sniff test. Turn to page 10 in your book. Hold the mask up to your face without the strap around your head. Inhale gently through your nose and let go of the mask. Does the mask stay on your face? If it does, it fits. Mask up to your face. Inhale, let go. If the mask falls off, it's leaking air somewhere and does not fit. At the top of page 18 of your book, you'll see the first of several entries snorkelers use to get into the water. The first entry is the giant stride entry. Take the giant stride entry into the water from medium to high places and if you do not know how far it is to the bottom, so that your feet can land first if bottom is shallow. On the middle of page 18, you'll find the next entry. This entry is called the back roll. The back roll is taken from low places like small boats. It is very useful if you know how far down the bottom is. Again, on the bottom of page 18 of your book, you'll find the next entry, called the front roll. The front roll can be used from low places when you know where the bottom is and when you know the water's depth. Look at your next page, page 19 in your book. At the top of the page, you'll see how we get from the surface of the water to underneath the water with the head first dive. The head first dive can be used if you know the depth of the water and want a fast, efficient dive. Remember, take a big breath and hold it just before going underwater.
On the middle of page 19, you'll find the next dive, called the tuck dive. The tuck dive can be used when you know the bottom and depth of water, and if you want very little splash. The last dive at the bottom of page 19 is called the feet first dive. The feet first dive can be used when diving in kelp and if you are unsure of bottom or depth. Like the giant stride, you'll land on your feet. Turn to page 22 in your books now. We're finished with dives and you've seen how you can get into the water and underneath the water. But what should you do if once you're underwater your mask is bumped and fills with water? Do you need to go back to the surface? Not always. You can clear your mask underwater. There are four steps to clearing your mask. Step one, reseal the mask against your face. Make sure your hair and straps are out of the way. Step two, look down and press the top of the mask gently against your face so the air you're about to breathe into your mask doesn't escape, but the water does. Step 3. Exhale or blow gently through your nose. The air you put into the mask will push the water out of the mask through the bottom. The air will stay, but not the water. Step 4. Slowly tilt your head and mask towards the surface, still exhaling. The last bit of water will escape from your mask. No water. You can continue snorkeling and see everything you want to see. On the next page of your book, page 23, you'll find out how to use your fins. The easiest kick is the modified flutter kick. This kick is like the one you already do when you swim. Kick slowly and let your fins push you through the water. The slower and deeper you kick, the faster you'll go. On the bottom of page 23, you'll find another way to use your fins, called the dolphin kick.